This paper is about template attacks against the desk key schedule in actual implementations. My name is Johan Heisel and this is a collaboration with multiple co-authors from three different institutions. Two of them are Fraunhofer Institutes, one of them is the German Federal Office for Information Security, the BSI. The motivation for this work were several ePrint publications from several years where there was described an attack um, against a commercial security controller where single trace attacks led to significantly weak keys and also to remaining rest entropies of keys which were very low. So this was surprising and interesting and um, uh, after reading those publications there were several questions which in our opinion were left unopened or unanswered. Namely, um, are there really such wide distributions and are there really side channel weak keys and is this reproducible using state of the art tooling? Is this device specific to one specific commercial security controller or is it more general and does it even apply to other devices? What is the impact on what is the actual impact on three key triple DES, which is the only real application of this nowadays? And is it predictable, this, are those weak keys predictable through simulation? This is, was the start of our work and we started with an empirical study using a similar commercial security controller which was programmable for this investigation and we target the desk key schedule. We use a high precision EM setup, we decap the security controller, we perform measurements from the back side, we spent a lot of effort for alignment and then we did a t-test using a preliminary leakage assumption to detect measurement positions and used a correlation based leakage test to select points of interest. To the desk key schedule, the desk key schedule is remarkable because it's very simple. Uh, unlike the AES key schedule, which for instance includes an S-box transformation, the desk key schedule is much simpler. It simply shifts and permutes key bits. Yeah? So the round keys, and there are 16 round keys, are simply created by shifting and permuting bits from the original key. This means that bits reappear in all the round keys and remarkably this also means that transition, transitions between key bits on certain bit positions also reoccur. So this is depicted in this table here. We see half of the desk key schedule. We see the so-called register C. So we see half of the 56 initial key bits and we see the 16 round keys in in, as one round key in a row and then what is highlighted here is that um, for two examples that specific key bits from the original key su um, subsequently uh, follow each other on the same position. So for instance on a lot of occasions the bit 0 follows after the bit 7 and uh, here um, in red depicted the bit zero follows on the bit 14. Yeah? So um, if we look in, into the other bits, this is similar. So this is a different representation of the same key bits and um, the, the figure here shows um, all the, the transitions between key bits which um, occur in a this key schedule. So the dashes are again the transition between those key bits and the two colors, they indicate whether those transitions occur, occur more frequently or less frequently. The red ones occur only three times and the blue ones occur ten times. Now this is interesting because it's this, those bit transitions, um, those um, the number of those bit transitions is, is much smaller than if those bits would randomly uh, be distributed um, across the round keys. Yeah? Um, in order to understand how the template attack should work um, in the best way, we needed to understand the leakage model of the device in more detail. And uh, we approach this by precisely analyzing um, the leakage model through calculating SNRs for value leakage, so for the leakage that the bits um, have directly and for the, the leakage that occurs through the XOR, of, through, the, through the sequence of uh, two bits. 
and we found that this device exhibits exclusively XOR leakage. So that this device, this specific, specific security controller only leaks the XOR difference between subsequent bigs. This means that we can group those XOR transitions into templates and um, we did this um, and created 7-bit templates and this also meant that we could use state-of-the-art key rank estimation for those um, independent uh, template results and derive security levels from those template attacks. The dashed boxes here represent um, how we selected the XOR transitions for the for the templates and um, and proceeded with the template attack. Now the results. This is the first result of um, the the analysis, and this um, on this figure we see the security, the resulting security level for um, for one thousand attacks. And um, we see a histogram of, of results on the on the um, y-axis. Yeah? And what is remarkable here, and it, what is similar to the findings of those previous uh, publications, is that the results are widely distributed. So unlike usually when, for instance, performing DPA, where we would expect um, a certain narrow span of, of, the, of, of results, we see that there is security levels, resulting security levels from this template attack against the, the, the key schedule, which span from very low numbers to higher numbers. Um, so um, the the orange line here de um, depicts the medium, um, the average uh, result, which is still a quite high number given um, a single days uh, an attack single days. But we also see that there is significantly lower security levels, and we tested. Uh, also uh, specific or very special keys and we found that for uh, two very specific keys namely a key with all zeros and a key with all ones the the resulting security level is as low as two bit even yeah and um, since this is a distribution it follows that the more keys we test the 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 more we find which have exceptionally low um, uh, security levels now, if an attacker uses more traces than a single trace, um, this improves the situation for the attacker. And um, what we see here in those figures is the first figure is the same as before. This is the case for a single trace for the attacker. And then we have the case for three traces for an attacker and then the case for 900 traces for the attacker. And we see that the distribution moves to the left, meaning that the results for the attacker get better, the security levels get lower, and also the, the um, mean security levels get lower. Yeah? But this also means that the, this wide distribution is not due to noise factors or um, that, that can be averaged out. So if we use like 900 traces for, for an attack, then there are several noise factors which we already average out. So this means that those noise factors are not the reason for this wide distribution. This is a different um, uh, figure um, and this shows the evolution of security levels over the number of traces. So here on the x-axis we have um, um, 900 traces and on the y-axis we have the result of an attack after this number of traces. And what we see here is that the attack result asymptotically converges to a certain level. So we see that after um, a certain number of traces, the result stabilizes and um, there is no further gain for the attacker, meaning that the fact the noise factors that can be averaged out are averaged out then and uh, the remaining, the resulting security level stabilizes. In this, in the left side, we selected 10 random keys um, for, to, for this figure. And on the right side, we, use, we selected 10 
uh, keys which showed lower security levels. And what we see in this, uh, from the comparison from the two figures is that there is an inherent um, uh, security levels that the keys converge to. Yeah? And even if the number of traces is increased, um, the, the security level um, stabilizes at a certain, at a certain um, value. So from this and several other um, findings, we conclude that it is the leakage model and also the switching noise from the, the key bits, um, which determines the key weakness, which is an interesting um, finding. Yeah? Now, as an overview and comparison from, from uh, this work to the previous uh, works, um, as a summary, we see that the, that the results are similar. So the, the specifics um, are a little bit different, but for instance, in this single trace attack from this related work, there were actually four death executions per trace. And so this is comparable to the case from, from this work when we use three traces and in every one of those three traces, uh, there is um, due to a countermeasure, as it seems there is about one and a half death executions per trace. The security, uh, mean security level in those two comparable cases is quite similar. So what, what we learn from this is that using a state of the art and solid approach as described here and, and with described in more detail in the paper, we, um, we, it leads to similar results, hence they are reproducible, hence they are really weak keys and all, also the, the, the security level of keys is widely distributed. But what does it mean for an actual application? of this. So we know that this is outdated in general, but if this is used, then at least it should be used in triple, um, triple this mode with three keys. And to, to understand what this means for this kind of um, use of the this, um, we, uh, we, we came up with a method to, to estimate this security of a three key uh, triple this. Um, implementation based on the analysis or investigation of a single death um, attack. And um, we, we estimate this uh, result for three key triple deaths um, by even allowing the attacker a meet in the middle advantage while using um, side channel results. And um, the figure here um, shows an empirical density of security levels. So on the x-axis, we have again security levels. And on the y-axis, um, uh, as shown here, we have an empirical density. And then uh, we see four different graphs. And uh, the blue graph is the one that, that is derived from the single trace results. Um, and as expected, it shows the, the highest results, so the highest security levels, and then the attacker gains something when he increases the number of attack traces. When he use three, uses three traces, um, it's the orange uh, um, density, and if he uses 900 traces, it's the green density. And we see that the, by increasing the number of traces, the distributions move to the left, meaning that there is more keys with lower security levels. So in, um, um, as a result, we see that a lot of the, the, the security levels will remain in a quite high range, but we also see that, that those distributions have long tails to the left and there is a certain percentage of, of um, low security level keys. In a table and with concrete numbers, this means that on, on average, um, in this row here, on average, um, the security level is still very high, so it's still in the range of 80 to 90 bits. But this also means, or the, the results also show, that um, there is a fraction of cases where the security level is lower than 80 bits, for instance, and um, the, the fraction of cases where this is happening 
depends on the number of traces used. And for instance, if um, a single trace attack is performed, then we see that this estimation leads to an estimated dot 24% of cases which show um, a security level uh, below 80 bits for three key triple deaths. So this is not zero, but it's still a very low number, meaning that uh, roughly, for instance, this is it can it can um, it can be thought of like every um, an attack on every 400 uh, device shows a security level below 80 bits. Yeah? So what we asked ourselves is um, if this can be generalized through a simulation. So and for this for this purpose we created a simulation where we where we simulated xor leakage without any noise factors and um performed the same a similar attack um or the same attack and um and the results show that even in this simplified simulation we get a very wide distribution of security levels and even in this civil uh, simulation we already see that there are weak keys to be expected with exceptionally low security levels. Hence, we, we, we find that the issue must be more general than applying to this one specific security controller. And then we wanted to understand whether this simulation can can help to predict reality. So whether this simulation can be can be used to predict the resulting outcome of an actual um, measurement. And for this purpose, the figure shows the security level, and we attacked a lot of different keys, and we attacked them once in a simulated scenario. And this is the the x-axis, and then it uh, shows the results of an actual um, attack of the same key on the device and on the uh, y-axis. Uh, and if the simulation and the actual uh, device would be perfectly equal, then we would expect uh, a perfect diagonal in, this, in these results. Uh, but what we see is that this is not the case. Um, specifically, the the blue group of of um, keys here shows only uh, um, a relation between simulation and reality to a certain extent. And this blue group of of keys is is a group of randomly selected keys. So for randomly selected keys, which are uh, more representative of a real world kind of scenario we show that the simulation and the reality have a certain relation or there is a certain predictability but this is not um, um, very good but then um, we we also tested this for for special keys for keys where about 90 percent of the key bits are either all zeros or either all ones so those are keys which are skewed. So the, the distribution of the keys is not uniform, but is either very uh, a high number of zeros or a high number of, of, of ones. And for those kind of special keys, the, the red uh, dots in this figure, we see that the relation between simulation and reality is, 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 is much more precise. So there is a, a much um, di more direct relation between the two. And then from this we also learn hence that this um, this uh, key weakness and 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 the, this 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 concept of of side channel weak keys for the desk key schedule is is um, partly device agnostic so so partly non specific to a, to a specific device. And to, to proceed further into understanding this, we also tested the second security controller of the same manufacturer, uh, manufacturer and uh, this led to very similar results. The results were about uh, three bits better in terms of the, the security levels were higher, but nonetheless, it's still a case of a wide distribution and, and um, we, it's still to be expected that there are weak keys. Then uh, we used a totally different device. We used an off-the-shelf um, uh, regular uh, general purpose microcontroller, an STM32. We used the hardware um, DES engine of this microcontroller and performed a similar attack. 
Um, in this case, we also, again, we tested for the leakage model and we found that the leakage model was completely different. So this device leaks the values of bits, not their transition, not the X or between values. And still an attack against this device is still leading to similar results in terms of there is a wide distribution of results and there is um, obviously uh, weak keys to be expected. So what do we conclude from this investigation? Um, we set um, out to, to, to answer questions that we found were left open through um, this series of publications that, that we referenced. And we um, found um, through our investigations, we found that this wide distribution of security levels and wikis in fact does exist for a similar security controller and also exists for, for different implementations and even for different leakage models. So um, for, at, at least for leakage models such as an XOR leakage model or value-based leakage model, the desk key schedule, um, if it leaks, will uh, lead to the, to the case of um, uh, wide distributions of, of security levels and weak keys. Yeah? Um, why, why is this the case? The desk key schedule seems very prone to this because this non-linearity in the, the key schedule leads to the fact that bits and their transitions reoccur frequently. Uh, this uh, increases the amount of leakage that can be um, exploited by an attacker generally. Yeah? Nonetheless, um, given um, our findings, um, we can say that the impact on the specific commercial security controller seems less dramatic than the original publications alleged, with only a very small percentage of cases with a security level of below 80 bits after an extensive um, sidechain attack. What we find is left open through these results is that if an side channel attack, if, if in, in a similar scenario or in this scenario, a side channel attack leads to uh, results which are distributed and where the distribution is wide and maybe there is even outliers or, or f a few cases with, with very low um, um, uh, security levels, then it's interesting to, to, to assess the security of such a device in, in such cases. It seems on the one hand, it seems um, unfair to assess the security based on the average security level. On the other um, hand, um, it's difficult to, to understand whether um, uh, a low percentage of outliers should be um, used to assess the security levels. And also um, from, from these findings and discussions, um, we find that, that most probably, probably a lot of different um, uh, algorithms, key schedules should be affected of a similar, uh, by a similar um, finding if there is leakage for an attacker that, ex that is um, exploitable. And with this, um, I, I would like to conclude the talk. These are the contact informations and um, some references. Thank you.